Ian would say to Jora, don't expect any favors from that girl. Be kind to yourself. That would be my main piece of advice. First day on set, there was a wedding going on. A wedding of Carl Drogo and Daenerys. Jorah arrives with this rather sweet present. Songs and histories from the Seven Kingdoms. Are you from my country? Sir Jorah Mormont of Bear Island. His first movement is a dishonest one which we don't know at the time. I served your father for many years. God be good, I hope to always serve the rightful king. He senses a sweet truth about Daenerys. Looking back at the whole trajectory of season one, you realize how much travel there is in their roles together. He witnessed her marriage to Khal Drogo, the death of her brother, and seeing her cope with the death of her child. And then it all leads up to this funeral part with Carl Drogo having died. And I remember that sequence and when we shot it in Malta, and it was rather magical, and it was very windy, very, very elemental. We actually had to wait, I think, three days at the, the, the unit. It's the only time in the Holy Thrones where we were ground to a complete halt. Action! And it was Daenerys entering the ashes of the pyre and then she gives birth to the dragon out of these ashes. In that moment, everything comes together and he sees this woman who's more than anything that he could have ever imagined. I think we understand by the end of season one that he is going to live for her. Blood of my blood. Funny thinking about it. Feels like forever ago, you know? A decade ago, when we were shooting those scenes. Psst. Viando. The spider sends his greetings and his congratulations. A royal pardon. You can go home now. The big event of season four is Sejora getting banished because uh, it finally comes out that uh, he was being less than truthful when he first first met Danny. When I read the scene, I go, oh, ouch, 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 ouch. But I loved playing it, and uh, Amelia was great in it. You betrayed me from the first. <laughs> Forgive me. I never met. Please, girl, easy. Forgive me. You sold my secrets to the man who killed my father I and stole you my brother's throat. You want you. me killed to for forgive you. you. We can't even remember when he was the person who was betraying her uh, because he's been utterly loyal and utterly behind her uh, ever since. Any other man I would have you executed, but you, I do not want you in my city dead or alive. Constantly in Thrones, every character has such massive story arcs. One of the reasons that I love Jorah is those massive journeys. You find them in very different predicaments all the time. We all go from one place to a completely different place, and nearly everyone. I return to your service, my queen. If you'll have me. It would be my honor. When you've got 80 hours of television, these stories can span such long periods, and I think they really resonate with audiences. Favorite day on set was definitely a day in Asuna when we were doing the gladiatorial sequence. My family was there and my little girl was there and they dressed her up like me, which was, was sweet, in my, a kind of imitation Jorah outfit. And they, they took her to the makeup and put dirt and blood on her and gave her a sword. She watched her proper work. David said, come sit here, you can call. And she, she was like, action. <laughs> The whole massive sequence with hundreds of extras. People fighting and cut. And everyone would go to a halt. Really <laughs> made people laugh, made me laugh. I have a few swords over the course of Thrones, but I love my first. I had a peacock feathered hilt, my, my broadsword. Designed for piercing flame. 
and I lived with it for a good few seasons, and uh, I loved the weight of it and everything about it. Take me to Slaver's Bay, put a sword in my hand, I'll prove my worth. I'd say my favorite proper costume is my yellow golden shirt, which I just wore forever. It would be suggested, I think we should have a yellow black shirt for this bit, and I, why? I like my yellow goldie. It looked so manky by the end, so I had to contract grayscale, really, to get rid of it. I think I should still wear No, Ian, you've got grayscale, right? It was all over the friggin' shirt, so you can't wear that anymore. Oh, OK. I'm so sorry. Don't be. All I've ever wanted was to serve you. Amelia, she just took on a massive role and pulled it off. And the most beautiful thing about Amelia, she has no idea how good she is. She genuinely has no idea, and she still has no idea. She's always vulnerable. It's part of her, part of a great gift. She's a wonderful actress, but she's also a wonderful person. And she deserves all the good things that Thrones will bring her. She's a very good friend and love on and off the set with uh, Amelia, yeah. Why should anyone follow me? You're a Targaryen. You're the mother of dragons. Thrones is the Holy Grail, where it's something that is enormously, globally, massively popular, and people think it's cool. It's critically approved of. And you have to love those times, because if you're not loving them, then you may as well not turn up to work, because it doesn't get better than that. It's been transformative to all our acting lives or right across the cast. Thrones become a family. This is indicative of the laugh that we have and the fun that we have doing it. I've loved the role, I've loved the people. It's been a joyride from beginning to end. I just little to thank Dan and David for taking us on um, an amazing adventure. And uh, I've loved every second of it. It's been fantastic, thank you.